Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Daily IoT. Really excited, just finished watching the Capitals complete a comeback victory over the Detroit Red Wings, uh, scoring late in the third, taking the win in overtime. So really excited about that. Off to a little bit of a slow start, but uh, in a good mood because the Caps just pulled off a nice win. So in today's episode, if you remember from last episode, we talked about how we could uh, push data down to our particle photon from LOSANT um, using some really cool things about querying the API, grabbing the data here in LOSANT, uh, refactoring a little bit, and then sending only what's necessary down to our device, which is really cool. However, in looking at that, we have to have our photon running all the time. It's always running. It's always waiting for these pushes from the LOSANT cloud. And so if we look at our goals from the project, this push to low, from LOSANT is really in competition with our low power techniques or making this low power because at the end of the day for you know we we have a couple different ways that we can implement this but the one i've chosen is to go inside of a hockey puck with a little battery like this which fits into my nice little bored out hole there and so i'm running the photon on this little guy right here and so i can't be running 24 hours a day waiting for low sand to push updates that is not low power and so Pushing is in direct competition with low power tech. So we need to come up with a different approach. And for that, we need to be able to go both ways here. So we proved that LOSANT can do the push. That was a goal. We're gonna check that off. Good to go. We're using an e-paper display and we are using the NHL API. So we're doing pretty well. However, like I said, we need to now maybe flip this a little bit and go at it by saying, I wanna pull the stats out just when I need them. When we have something like a puck, the stats are only ever changing when a game is occurring. And so we can do some smart things to only request stats maybe, in the case of the puck, maybe we only ask for stats when a game is over and then go to sleep the rest of the time. That would be a, an approach that we could use. And so for today's episode, I've been playing around with low sand and I have come up with a solution to this problem that will help us implement this low power technique. And um, really neat things I feel like we've been able to accomplish using low sand um, to create a scenario where the stats are ready to go when we need them and we can just wake up, pull them down, go back to sleep. So I'm gonna show you how I implemented that. I'm not gonna walk through the step-by-step. -step. It's a lot of creating a workflow, data table. I'm gonna introduce some concepts that I will show you from within LOSANT, but I will not do a complete walkthrough. I might save that for like a blog post uh, to just list the steps and the settings. But let me explain briefly the idea and then I will show you in LOSANT how I implemented that. And so what we need is a way, like I said, for this to reach up, grab the stats and pull them back down. Now, we could go directly to the API, which we've talked about. There's a lot of overhead. We have to be able to parse a lot of data and things like that. Um, and what we also don't want is for the puck to say, hey, LOSANT, go out, grab it from the API and then give it back to me. All the time that LOSANT spends talking to the API is wasted time. Every millisecond that the particle photon is awake, we are chewing through battery. So we don't want to do that. And so the idea that I came up with was, what if we could store the stats in LOSANT? It could even 24 hours a day, even when games aren't going on, it could be asking the API, are there new stats, are there new stats, are there new stats? And then storing them here in LOSANT, and then when the puck needs them, reaches out, grabs them, pulls them back down. And now, what's really cool and powerful about this, and I wanna point this out because um, some people might still be asking like, what's the point of low sand here? Like, why can't we use something else? The point is low sand abstracts away. So now we're talking about storing data from the API. We need some sort of table and, you know, grabbing the stuff from the API. We're not writing any code for any of this. This is all done through graphical workflows and settings. And I mean, it's really just, you're clicking through things. It's, it's a clicking setup. Um, 
we're not writing. We're not writing any Node.js. We're not writing any Python or whatever your preferred, you know, Django. We're not setting up a Django website. Losant abstracts a lot of that complexity away, allows us to configure things in a very simple and easy to understand way, and then allows us to interact with it from our puck. And so let me show you um, how I implemented this idea of storing data within Losant that it gets from the API without writing a single line of code. The first thing that we need to do to implement this approach in Losant is create a place to store the player stats that we want to track. And to do that, we can use the Losant concept of data tables. So I'm in my IoT Hockey application here. I'm going to come over to the data tables tab. And you can see that I've added a table called player stats. Now, this is very simple to do. You just click on the add table and it will ask you what fields that you want to add. So I'm going to click into the player stats table and show you what this looks like. With every Losant data table, there are three fields that will always be present uh, without you having to configure them. That's the ID field here. And if we scroll all the way to the end, there's a created at and updated at, which are managed by the Losant backend. All the rest of these fields are stats that I would like to track for the players. Now I have the player ID, which is the unique ID that identifies them within the NHL stats API. Is goalie is just a true or false Boolean. Um, I set that up in there because goalies have different stats than other skaters. Things like GAA and save percentage and wins, those are stats that are specific to goalies and not to other skaters. And so I created that one and then the name will come back to in a minute. And then the rest of these are just the stats that I want to track. So if you were to configure this in your Losant account, you could track anything you wanted. Penalty minutes, shifts, time on ice, anything that you want. Uh, I just have a small subset of them here. And so this is where our data will live for all of the players that we want to track. You can see I've already added uh, Marc-Andre Fleury and he has some stats already in the table here. His GAA, save percentage, and wins. So how do we get data into this table? For that, we need a workflow. So I'm going to come over to the workflows tab and show you what I created. I created this new workflow called fetch player stats and it looks very simple and it is, but not quite as simple as it looks. There's a little bit more under the covers. Let me show you uh, what we have here. The first thing we've covered this before is a virtual button. So if I click this, it will trigger the workflow and that's what I've been using during testing. The very first part of the workflow is this table get because data tables are first class citizens in Losant, they are part of the node palette. So if we come over here, there's a data section. And at the very bottom of the data section, we have nodes for table operations, inserting rows, getting rows, updating and deleting the basic CRUD operations. And so this first node is just a table get. And it's very simple. You choose the table. I've selected player stats. And then you have very basic database operations for fetching rows from the table. You can do a query. In this case, I have left it blank because I just want all rows from the table. I want all of the players. But you could limit this by doing some simple templated uh, query. You can do things like sort, uh, limit the result set to a certain number, and even start at an offset. Again, if you're familiar with database operations, these are all very, very standard things that you can do. And so once we fetch the rows from the table, we need to store them someplace. And for that, I've selected just data.rows. And so now in data.rows, I will have that, all the rows that feed into subsequent blocks. In our case, the loop function. And so this loop is just a, a logic block under the logic section here in the node palette. You can see loop. And if we click on that and scroll back up to the top, the first thing that it needs is a loop source. So I've selected data.rows might be what you think you want to loop over, but in fact, it's the dot items member of rows that are the actual rows from the database. So we're going to loop over all of the rows and then we need to dis define a current item path. So each time through the loop, what is the current row defined as? And I've set that to be data.row. So let's take a look at what the loop is actually doing. To do that, we're going to click on this little icon in the lower right hand corner of the loop node. It says view group contents, and that will take us down into the loop. The start is just the same as the loop node. It specifies what the source and current item are. So we will skip over that. 
And what it does is feeds into this HTTP node. And so if we come into here, we've shown how this works before, but just as a quick reminder, we specify the method, which in our case is just a get, and we're gonna call the NHL stats API. And we've seen how this works in a previous episode where we do API slash V1 slash people, and then the ID of the player. Well, in this case, since we're looping over the table rows, we can grab the player ID straight out of the row. Remember, the row is stored at data.row, and the pattern for this is you do dot value dot column name to extract pieces of data. And so I want the player ID and to fill in the rest of my URL. So this is gonna make a call out to the stats API, grab the stats for this particular player and return them. And we have to specify where we would like those results stored. In this case, data.rawstats. I'm gonna take data.rawstats and it's gonna feed down into this mutate block. And again, from the previous episode, we saw that the NHL stats API, the, the JSON that it returns is very nested and gnarly. And all the mutate block does is clean that up for us. So I'm gonna reach down into raw stats here. You can see body, people, the first person, stats, the first section of stats, and then splits, and then all the way down. We're just gonna grab the very end stat member here, which has the raw stats and store it in data.stats. While we're here, we're also gonna reach down into that same nested uh, rat's nest of JSON and grab the full name of the player and store it in data.fullName so that we can use that in our next and final step of the loop, which is updating the table. So in our table update, you can see, uh, again, we, we specify which table we would like to act on and then we need to specify the row that we wanna update. Because this is a row update node, we have to define which row we would like to update. And so we have that because we're looping over the rows, we have, remember the current row is data.row, uh, .items are all of the columns, but .value.id is that raw table row ID. So we need that. And then we're just gonna come down here and do a set column value for all of the stats. And so we just, whether the player has all of the steps or not, doesn't actually matter because it will just set it to null. So for every single column in the table, name and GAA and save percentage and wins, we're just reaching down into that data.stats that we set up in the previous one. Let's see if you can get this, the wind is a little small. And then just like in this case, goal against average or save percentage. And so this will literally update the row in the table for that player. And so that is really all there is to the loop. Uh, just as a tip, when you're in the loop here, this loop view, and you wanna get back up to your main workflow, you can see there's this breadcrumb um, up here at the top. You just click on the develop. Uh, we're in the loop right now. We click on develop and that'll take us back up to our main workflow. Again, this is just a bunch of graphical blocks that we're configuring settings for to be able to do a lot of backend processing of fetching our stats and storing them in Losant. Getting the stats, however, is not gonna be very useful if I have to click on this button every time I want to get them. So to show you how we can make this a little more backend friendly, I'm gonna grab a timer trigger, um, drop it over here, and we'll give it a label of every minute. And it's just a simple interval, interval, run once every minute, perfect. And then I'm just gonna feed this down into here as well. So now we have two ways to start our workflow. We can either push this button or every minute after we deploy, it's gonna continually grab stats for our players, which is exactly what we need. Again, it's a little bit inefficient because stats are only changing while players are actually in a game. And we could add a lot more uh, smarts to this so that we only fetch um, stats while games are in action. But as a very simple first pass at this, we're just gonna say every minute, all day, every day, we're gonna check for new stats. So let's see this in action. I'm gonna go ahead and deploy workflow. So now every minute, I'm gonna be grabbing updated stats and I'm gonna come back to our data table. And one of the things that's really powerful about the way this has been implemented is that we can add new players 
to our logic flow just by adding their player ID to the table. We don't have to make any changes anywhere else. And so let me show you how we can do that. We're gonna open up a new tab here and let's just say Connor McDavid NHL stats. Look at that, Google knows what I'm trying to talk about. And we click on that. This is just Connor McDavid's NHL page. But what's really nice about this is we don't even need the API to find his unique player ID. It's right up here in the URL. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to come back over to Losant. And we're just going to add a row to the table. The player ID is a required string. We're going to paste in that ID that we just copied. Is goalie, we're going to set to false. And then the name we could type in here, but remember the workflow is gonna set that for us automatically. So for now, I'm just gonna say set to null and that's it. It would let me set any of these other stats if I wanted to, but I don't want to, I'm lazy. That's what the whole workflow is gonna do for us. So scroll all the way down to the bottom, hit save row. And you'll see we have his player ID, he's not a goalie, and then everything else is set to zero here. So now all we have to do is wait one minute and then we can hit this refresh button and we should see his row of the data table update. So let's wait just a minute and come back. All right, I think that's been about a minute. Let's go ahead and hit the refresh here. And look at that. The name auto-populated for us. All of these first stats are null because he is not a goalie. He does not have a save percentage. But look at here, we have goals, assists, plus minus, shot percentage, all these things coming right in. Just to do a sanity check for goals, assists, plus minus, we have three, five, negative two. We'll come over here, scroll down. Look at that, goals, three, assists, five, plus minus is negative two absolutely perfect just what we were looking for and so now you can see the power here of how any player we want to enable in this workflow we just add a row stick in their player id say whether they're a goalie or not and the workflow will take care of the rest this i'm really excited about how this turned out and this sets up everything that we need for our back-end storage of player stats all right, so that is the basic idea for how we implemented this idea of storing stats in Losant so that the puck can pull them just when needed. And so we've got this little, I've drawn this, this little stats database node up here, which is part of Losant, so that Losant is constantly updating this. So that completes, I think, this back end for us of collecting the stats that we need. Uh, in the next episode, I will show you how um, we can use a Losant webhook to do this pull out, grab, and pull back down, the, the reach out, grab, and pull back down, um, which should be the last piece in this whole process of getting stats down to our smart hockey puck. Question of the day. So we're using Losant as a bit of a database. It has a, this concept of data tables, and so we're using it as a database. Uh, the question of the day is, what is your favorite database, things like Mongo, Redis. It could be anything. It doesn't have to apply to our project here. What is your favorite database technology? Uh, I appreciate everybody watching. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, I really appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button. Until next time, thanks for watching Daily IoT, the show where together we're learning how to make the internet of things one day at a time.